Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Wonderless Wednesdays. So I'm going to be mindful of your time that um, for the folks that are already here and want to say thank you for, for joining. It's been a while since we've done a, a Wonderless Wednesdays, and I thought it was time for us to um, get back together. It just, it just um, briefly... Um, and I wanted to go over the trips that we have out there for 2022. We have a jam-packed um, roster of trips for this year. Um, some of you who get my emails and things like that, you may know about them. A lot of you have already signed up for some trips, um, but others of you may have some questions. So I wanted to have a form here where um, you can ask questions of the trip if you're still on the fence about signing up for it, or if you've already signed up for it, um, you know, you can, you can ask questions here um, as, as well. So I'm excited about this year and what's coming, um, what's coming down the pipe. Um, even in light of the kind of elephant in the room that has everybody all worried. I know we're all worried about, about COVID or Corona, or Rona, whatever you want to call her. Yes, we are worried. And um, so what I just want to say is that, I'm not here to convince anybody to travel at all. I mean, if you're nervous and you're concerned, you have every right to be, and then you travel whenever you feel comfortable with traveling. But for those, those of you who are willing, who are going to be masked up, boosted up, vaccine up, prayed up, I'm your girl. If you're willing to go, I will take you. So that's, um, that's what it's all about. So if, 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 you know, for those of you who say, you know what, I'm tired of sitting in the house, um, I've got my vaccine, I got my boosters, I wear my mask. Um, I still want to see the world um, while you can, then um, I'm here to help that, to help make that happen for you. So that's what this is all about. And in 2022, we have a ton of places that we're visiting. So what I want to do during this session is to go over the trips that um, we currently have planned for 2022. And I'm going to use a brochure. I created a, a, a brochure that I sent out to some people, not to everyone. Um, um, I just do like a random sample to see if, um, if people like hard copy brochures. Um, so if you do want more hard copies, let me know. We can do them do them um, in, in the future. So I'm going to go through the brochure, go through the trips that we have planned for this year. Of course, some of the trips in the first quarter of the year, you know, they're closed, they're either booked or just too late to sign up for. But for the trips, you know, from, you know, Q3, Q4, Q2, 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 from the second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter, they're still open. So that's, I'm going to focus on those uh, more than anything. So let me share my screen. And here we go. All right. So hopefully you guys can, um, can see my screen. If you can see my screen, just put a yes in the chat. Okay, great. Okay, great. Thank you. Just want to make sure. Yeah, I don't have Donna with me now. I used to have Donna as my backup. So she would be, be the one on the, um, help me out. So I'm running solo today. So this is the brochure that I sent out for the 2020 trips. And I'm just going to go through the trips one by one. Um, if you have questions, put them in the Q&A box. And I will go through all of your questions at the end of the presentation. Um, and so that's that. So if you have a question, please write it in the Q&A while it's still in your fresh your mind. And then, um, then we'll get to them at, at the end. So for those of you who got the brochure, you know, I sent out a welcome note to saying how excited I am about 2022 and all the great places that we're going to go. Um, one thing that's different about this year, I actually have four U.S.-based trips. And I normally don't do a lot of trips in the U.S., but I heard you. And, you know, you guys said, hey, we want to see the U.S. as well as seeing other parts of the world. So this year we added four new trips um, within the, in the U.S. as well. OK, so um, and I'll just start going through through the trip. So here we go. All right. So the first trip we have for this year is Jamaica. We're actually leaving on Sunday um, to go to Jamaica. We have a group, I think it's 25 of us. Uh, that are just ready to get out of the cold and head over um, to to the islands, you know, and, and get some sun, get some fun and relaxation. 
Um, I've done Jamaica probably for the last three or four. It's probably my fourth year doing Jamaica. Um, uh, in January next year, I may change up the destination a little bit for the January trip. It'll be another Caribbean destination, but I'm, I'm, I might do, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see what the next de destination should be in January. If you guys have a favorite in mind, uh, let me know. And uh, I would definitely consider it right now. I'm looking at Cancun. That's a hot spot. Um, but we'll, we'll see. So we're leaving Sunday, going to Jamaica. Um, we're staying at the Jewel Grand Resort, which is a five-star resort in Montego Bay. It's about 10, 15 minutes from the airport. And um, it's amazing. It's one of the few, quote, unquote, vacations that I do um, where there's nothing planned except to eat, drink, and relax. So this is a great trip if you just want to get away. So if you like things, more things like this, let me know. But we always, I usually do one of these a year, which is kind of a true vacation. Um, then in February, we are heading to South America. We're going to Colombia. And I'm super, super, super excited about this. Um, Columbia has been on my bucket list for a while. And um, this year, we're going to make it happen. We have a small group, I think 10 to 12 people going to Colombia next month. And um, I like it because um, this is a trip that's right um, for exploring cultures and um, exploring different foods and also a little beachy as well. Colombia has a great Afro, Caribbean, Afro, um, um, Latin American culture, Afro Colombian culture. So um, it's, a, it's a great trip where, you know, we're gonna spend the day um, with the, uh, in the Palenque area with the, um, the the native the people that came from Africa to Colombia and kept their culture. Of course, we're going to try um, the, the the Colombian food. Um, we're going to do rum and chocolate tasting and doing a ceviche making class and things like that. So it's a great trip. Um, if you're interested, I may be able to get you on that trip, but we're I, I pretty much closed it out. But I I can check and see if there's space um, available. Um, Probably my hot trip for this year is Dubai. Dubai is, um, that's been like the most popular trip. We are still heading to um, Dubai in March. I think the group is about 40 people or so. Um, it's, it's great. It's great. People are excited. I'm going to have the Dubai Expo. Um, it's going to be going on while we're there. And Dubai is a fabulous place. Dubai never disappoints. Um, it has something for everyone. It has the glitz and the glamour. It also has the history as well. So we'll, you know, yes, we will we'll be staying at the JW Marriott Marquis, which um, was until recently the tallest hotel in the world. I think it's the second tallest. Um, all my groups that have stayed at the JW Marriott Marquis love, love, love it. Um, they said they need a day just to hang out at the hotel. Um, what I've done differently for the trip this year, you, the trip you in the past year, the trip has been. Um, seven days, six nights, but I added an extra day on to so we actually have seven nights in this trip with eight days, seven nights, uh, just to give you more free time to relax and do things on your own. Also, I have a couple of free days in there for you to go to the uh, Dubai Expo as well. And then we'll be doing the traditional things such as going to the Burj Khalifa, um, doing the desert um, safari barbecue. Um, we'll also do, you can do the camel riding there. Um, and also a highlight of the Dubai trip is actually going to Abu Dhabi, which is an, another emirate, and you go to the, um, the Grand Mosque and, and Abu Dhabi. That's always a highlight of, of this trip. So it's um, an amazing trip. And for those of you who are booked the Dubai trip, I will be having a separate webinar um, just to go over that trip and all of the requirements and the COVID rules and things like that. So look for an email from me um, this week. Um, it's going to be scheduled in early February, and it'll be focused just on on Dubai. And the same for all, just to let you know, for all the trips that we go on, I always have a pre-trip webinar where we discuss um, the itinerary, you know, what you should bring, what you, you know, what the currency is, um, the the entry requirements due to COVID. So we, I do that for each and every every trip, so you you aren't left out there trying to figure things out on your own. So. Let me see what's going on in the chat. All right. Oh, I see somebody like Aruba. Yeah, I tried to do Aruba, but nobody wants to go to Aruba. And so we'll see. All right. So the next trip, the next trip after 
Dubai, let me see, is the Black History Bus Tour. I actually just, the next couple of trips, I actually just closed. Um, they, to be honest with you, the response wasn't really good for them. So, um, you know, instead of pulling my hair out, trying to get people going, I said, you know what, let me just reschedule them for some other time. This Black History Bus Tour is amazing. I, I really like it. So for those of you who are signed up, I'm so sorry that we had to, we're going to push it. I don't know when we're going to do this trip again, but um, it's a great trip. So I'll just do briefly um, tell you about what it will be, but it's not on for this year. Um, just wasn't enough interest in it, um, but it's an amazing trip. It's, it's a long weekend trip. It's, it's in the U.S. Um, it's a bus trip leaving from New York. I was going to have one, um, one stop scheduled here in um, Westchester, another stop is going to be scheduled um, in, um, in the New York City area, probably in Harlem in front of the Adam Clayton Power Building. That's where we normally do the bus trip from, um, those two stops. If I have a large crowd from Brooklyn, I'll try to do that as well. But usually Westchester and Harlem is kind of a place that most people can tend to go to. And um, this trip was amazing. We were going to go to um, the Harriet Tubman Underground Railroad um, Museum and see that. We were going to visit the Arlington National Cemetery and see the changing of the guards. And for those of you who, who haven't seen the changing of the guards, it is, it is uh, it's amazing. The, the way the soldiers kind of are in sync and the pageantry they go to, is, 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 they deserve all the respect um, that we can give them. Um, we were also planning on going to the Mount Vernon estate. Um, that's George Washington's estate. Um, he's, of course, our first president, but George Washington also owned, he owned slaves. And so the slave quarter is still there on the estate that you can go and tour. So that's always um, a great thing to do. The Museum of the Bible, I think it's a relatively new museum, opened in the last couple of years, um, which is an amazing site to visit. That was part of the tour. Um, the Illuminated Monuments driving tour. D.C. comes alive at night and they light up all the monuments. And so one evening we were going to sit on the bus and drop as we left dinner, we were going to drive around DC and do the, um, see the tours lit up. That's great. And then um, also we're going to visit other um, historic sites. We're going to go back to the, um, the African American Museum as well. We're going to go to Arlington and do a walking tour of Arlington. So anyhow, so just keep that in mind for when I bring it out again, it's a fabulous, fabulous, fabulous trip. And then, so the next three trips, two trips are closed. Italy, um, this trip is currently closed. This is a trip to Tuscany. I personally love, love, love Tuscany. I mean, you guys know I love wine. So um, this was going to be a trip to Florence. Um, and we're going to go to Siena and other parts of Tuscany. I'm going to bring this back next year, but include other places like Rome and the south of Italy as well. So stay tuned for that. We're going to include... Um, Tuscany, Rome, and probably Sorrento in 2023. And Costa Rica is another one that's closed right now. Um, it's a quick getaway. That's what I love about Costa Rica. You can go to three different cities um, in one week and just travel by bus. And um, Costa Rica is amazing. The jungles are beautiful. The rainforest, it's just so lush and so green. Um, and the food is amazing. The food is amazing at Costa Rica. The people are really, really some of the kindest you will meet. Um, so we're going to bring this back again at some other time, but this trip is currently closed. All right. So let's get to the ones that you can sign up for. Turkey been on my bucket list for years and years and years and years and years. I think this is one of the most um, underrated or lesser known destination because everyone that I've spoken with that's been to Turkey has said amazing things about Turkey. Turkey's history goes back, I mean, to biblical time. Um, so for those of you Bible scholars in the group, you'll love it. We'll go to we'll visit Ephesians. Um, we'll go and visit um, the house of, of the Virgin, Virgin Mary, which is still there. Um, so that has a great biblical term, biblical um, content for you. Also, for those who just want to see beautiful scenery, this picture of the hot air balloon rise over Cappadocia, I mean, it's amazing. And this is really what it looks like. So I think a hot air balloon ride um, in Turkey over Cappadocia is a must. Um, Istanbul is a very dynamic city. 
Um, you know, a lot of things, you probably don't think about it, that Turkey is known for. Turkey is known for the Turkish coffee. Turkey is known for the Turkish bath. Tur Turkey is known for um, Turkish cotton sheep, Turkey's back row. So a lot of good quality things are, are known um, come out of Turkey. Um, also, this is, a, this is a big trip. So those of you who say that you want longer trip, this is 15 days. Um, April 28th to May 12th. I think it's about 14, 15 days, a two week trip. So um, for those of you who really, really want to get away, this is an amazing, amazing trip. Um, this is the typical Overton travel trip where every day you'd be up and at them, up and at them because we will cover a lot of ground. We probably visit maybe six different cities, five or six different cities um, during this two week period. So it's a lot packed into this trip. I, I'm, I'm so excited about it. So if you are interested in going to Turkey, there is space still on this trip and you can sign up and sign up soon um, because I think it, it's closing at the end of this month. So um, please, please, please sign up and um, contact me if you have additional questions about this. We'll put it in, in the Q&A box. But Turkey is amazing. I've, I've been looking so forward to it. And then um, also in May, so coming up in May, we have the Gullah Festival. Um, and this came as um, some people would, hey, Lori, have you been to the Gullah Festival? Have you been to the Gullah Festival? And I haven't. So, um, so keep telling me what you're interested in. And then um, I, can, I can drop it out that I can build a trip for it. But this is the Gullah Festival. You guys know I love cultural trips. You know I love studying um, African-American culture. And um, so the Gullah, pe this trip uh, is focuses on the Gullah Festival, but it's not just the Gullah Festival. The Gullah Festival happens every year during Memorial Day weekend. It's a three-day festival. We're going to spend two days um, at the festival. I didn't want to spend all three days of our trip there. I thought, I thought two days was enough. It's May 25th through the 30th. So what we're going to do, we're flying from New York to Charleston, South Carolina. So, we're, so it's not a bus trip, so to speak. We're, we're not taking a bus to South Carolina. We're flying from New York to South Carolina. And then once we get to Charleston, we have our own bus, you know, to take us around in the area. So we'll spend a day um, exploring Charleston. Um, we'll also spend a day in Savannah, um, exploring the African-American history of Savannah, Georgia. Um, and we'll be spending time in, in the, the actual festival takes place in Buford, South Carolina. So we'll be spending two days in Buford. And then we'll have probably about a half a day um, also in Charleston, Bruce, um, Bruford area, um, doing tours uh, of the Gullah culture. So it's amazing. You know, of course, we're going to have some good, good seafood in there. We're going to a low country boil. Um, we are going, I don't know, it's all, I, I forgot all the good restaurants we, I picked up, picked for it, but we have a lot of good food in here. Um, it, so the trip, like all trips, you know, includes your, your hotel, you know, breakfast every day and other meal and all the tours that we have planned. So I'm excited about this trip. There is still space. I think we may, we may have about 15 or so people. I think I'll take a maximum of 30 on, on this trip. So if you are interested in going to the Gullah Festival, I would say sign up soon and um, let me know if you have questions, but it's going to be uh, a great cultural experience. And it's right here in the U.S. For those of you who are still a little skittish about leaving the country, um, this is a great trip for you. Now we're moving into June, and I just like to say, ah, when we talk about Greece, I love Greece. You know, I love a lot of places, but Greece has a special place. I have personally spent two birthdays in Greece, celebrating, um, celebrating my birthdays in Greece because it's an amazing place. For those of you who have been, you know the beauty is uncomp uncomparable. I mean, this, this is how it looks. Um, the picture in the background here is of Santorini, and probably the most one of the most beautiful sights you'll ever see is when you're on the ferry coming to Santorini and you look up on the hill and this is what you see. So Santorini is probably one of the top 10 most beautiful places um, on the planet. Um, so we're going to spend about nine days in Greece. What we're going to do, we're going to fly, um, fly into Athens. And we spend the first two nights in Athens. And while we're in Athens, uh, of course, you would go up to the, the Acropolis, see the Parthenon there, which is gorgeous. Go to the new Acropolis Museum while you're there. Um, an optional tour would be Dinner in the Sky. When I went 
in 2019, a group of us went and had dinner in the sky. I have videos of that. If you want to see it? It's, a, it's really a fun thing to do. That's not included, but it's optional. Then after spending two nights in Athens, we then take the ferry over to Mykonos. Mykonos is such a fun place to be. Um, it's beautiful. Um, the food is fresh. It's amazing. It has a lot of history there as well. We spent two days in Mykonos, and I love, love, love the hotel that we stay in Mykonos. It's one of, one of my favorites. It's, it's very sexy um, the location as well. And we have a Mykonos tour um, included. So the way that we've done the Greece tour is on the island, we have one day of touring, one day of free time. So we have a Mykonos tour, and Mykonos, and the same thing in Athens. We do one day of touring, one day of free time. And then after Mykonos, we spent, no, we spent three nights in Mykonos. So it was two nights in Athens, three nights in Mykonos, and three nights in Santorini. So three nights in Mykonos, and then we go um, take the ferry from Mykonos to Santorini, and we spend three nights in beautiful Santorini, um, included in the Santorini. We do a tour of Santorini and this breathtaking tour all around the island. Um, we also do a wine tasting as well, because Santorini is known for, for their wines. Um, so it's an amazing trip. And then after we spend three nights in Santorini, we fly back to Athens and then fly back to um to the u.s as well okay all right so then i'm gonna go to the next question the next um the next trip after greece then ghana ghana is the quintessential trip for visiting the motherland um uh, i would say of all the trips that i've taken Ghana is probably the one that probably touched me the most, like emotionally. Um, you know, I've done South Africa, I've done Egypt, I've done Morocco and love them all for different reasons. But Ghana made you feel like I'm home in Africa. They welcome you with open arms. Um, the culture there is amazing. Um, you know, it's also a very emotional trip because part of the trip, we go to see the slave castle. So you see where... Um, where our ancestors, um, where they were kept in these small, small rooms before they were um, shipped out to, you know, across the Atlantic. So you learn a lot about the slave history there. Um, we learned about the, the African culture of pre-slavery. It's great. We eat amazing food in, in Ghana. It, it food is amazing. It's wonderful. Um, and we, you know, we, we hear the beats. We, we hear the drum, we see the dancing, um, we go to the, the naming, we have a naming ceremony um, in which um, we get an African name, um, which is, it, 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 I was so touched by it because first when we did it last year in 2019, I had so many questions like, how are they going to pick a name? What's, I, said, I, I was like, what? This is crazy. I, I, I was like, they don't know what they're doing. And then they gave me my name and I nearly boo-hoo. <laughs> I was like, this is so great. They gave me the name of patient. People always tell me I'm so patient. And people thought that their name um, really represented them. Um, and so also we did, we did a lot of shopping in Ghana. I mean, the shopping is unreal. Um, people have had to buy extra suitcases to come back from the Ghana trip because they bought, myself included, uh, I, you know, I did shop too. Um, the fabrics, the jewelry, uh, it just all the different souvenirs you can buy there is amazing so it's a shopper paradise a lot of the wraps that i used to wear um were fabric that i got from ghana as well so the ghana trip um if you can make it if you want to go to the motherland i would say really 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 try to make this this ghana trip it's a wonderful trip um to go on um so emotional um so educational um and yet a lot of fun. So it, it ticks all, all, all the boxes. Um, we learned so much history here and we learned so much um, about our culture um, from the time of the transatlantic slave, slave trade and before that, because our history doesn't start with slavery. Our history is mighty it's before slavery as well. So you learned that in Ghana. Also in July, we have um, another U.S. based trip. This is a civil rights tour. We did this tour in 2021 in September. It was amazing from what I heard 
The people that went on this trip had a wonderful time. If any of you guys went on the trip to here, you can drop a note in the chat, what have you. But um, everyone had a great time. And it's um, one of the comments that I got a lot was that even though most people lived through the civil rights movement of the 50s and the 60s, they grew up during this era, they learned so much from this tour that they didn't know about. I mean, so this, this trip really um, is good um, for you to kind of relive some things that you lived through, to learn about some things that you didn't know about, or even bring some, um, some high school students or your, your, your grandchildren or what have you on this trip. Um, I did it in September of 2021. I'm doing it during the summer of 2022. As a request, people said, Lori, can you do this trip during the summertime? I have a lot of educators in my, in my group who want to go on a trip like this. So I put it during the summer. Some people want to bring some, um, some of their children. I would say this is not a good trip for young children, but I would say, you know, maybe 12 or older because it is a week long trip. Um, so you, you probably want to be at least in middle school or high school. Um, to really be able to to enjoy enjoy this trip, so you ask, I put it during the summertime when school when school is out. So if you want to, you know, bring those those middle schoolers or high schoolers or college students with you, this is a great trip to bring them on. It's such an educational um, tour, uh, particularly now um, with all the voting rights issues that are going on. I mean, this is the same we are fighting today in 2022, the same battle that we're fighting. 50, 60 years ago. I mean, it, it's just uh, amazing. So those who do not know their history are doomed to repeat it. So we have to make this history known, keep it on the forefront, keep fighting for our civil rights because the struggle is real, y'all. It's real, it's real, it's real. So um, please, please, please learn about the history, teach others about it. And this tour is great. We go to the Legacy Museum, which is so emotional. It's a museum dedicated um, to those who, who, who would lynch. Um, we go, we walk across the Edmund Pettus Bridge, um, which it was the site of Bloody Sunday. You visit the Rosa Parks Museum. We know about Rosa Parks, who's kind of the fourth, um, the, the face of the Montgomery bus boycott. Um, you visit the National Civil Rights Museum, which is basically the Lorraine Motel in which um, Dr. King, where he was assassinated, they turned the motel into um, a museum now, which is amazing. Um, there's so much more we, we do. We, we spend a day talking about mu Black music in Memphis. So we go to um, the Stax Museum. We go to um, the Museum of, uh, of Soul Music in Memphis. We do all of that. Um, and then, of course, you know, we do Overton Travel Fashion. We do something a little different. We spend an afternoon at the Peabody Hotel having tea as well. That's the quintessential thing to do in Memphis. And that's the people love, love, love the tea. Um, in, um, in Memphis, you know, I like could do something a little bit lighter, but um, it's a great tour, very similar to the tour that I did um, in September that um, I got good feedback on, um, but some, some, might, with some tweaks to it as well. So um, please, please sign up um, for this trip. I think it's a, it's a great tour um, for, for the family. Bali, Bali. Bali is like heaven on earth, so I heard. Uh, I did Bali was one of the one of the tours I was able to get in in 2020. I took a, I sent a group to Bali in February of 2020, right before um, the world started shutting down from from COVID. And one of my clients who's been on me, who probably been on like five or six trips with me, who also went on the Bali trip, she called me after Bali. She said, "Lori, if I never go anywhere again, I'm good." She's just like Bali was amazing. It was such an amazing trip. Um, the beauty is phenomenal. Um, the food is amazing. The Bal Balinese people are so friendly. Um, there are temples everywhere. They're very spiritual people. And um, Bali has so many temples all around because they believe that you should, you should always be close to God. So there are temples, temples, temples. And so what I like about um, this particular tour is we spend four, um, four days in Nusa Dua, which is kind of the mountainous area of Bali. And then we spend four days in Ubud. So the first four days in Nusa Dua is ripping rock. You know, we go visit the monkey forest. We go visit um, the different, the famous temples that you see um, 
um, here. Um, we also have a Balinese cooking class. So it's very, very on the go the first four days of the trip. And then the last four days when we go down to Uba, we stay in a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful five-star resort. And you can relax the last four days. So it's really nothing planned. It's up. You're on the beach. Um, you're located close to town. Um, you can do whatever you want. And people who, in the February trip that I did in 2020, they went out and did things on their own and they loved it. So the Bali trip is great because it has a great combination of, you know, touring during the first half and then relaxing during the second half. A wonderful, wonderful, wonderful trip. Once again, I put this during the summertime. Um, it's a big trip. Um, it's a long flight to Bali. Yes, it is a long flight. Um, it's during the summertime for those of you who, um, you know, off work during the summer or educated or what have you. Um, this is a great time to go. This is high season in Bali because the weather is beautiful. Um, I think from like June until like October or uh, September or so. So August is right smack in the middle of the high season and it's going to be great weather, beautiful place. So please, please, please join us in Bali. South Africa, this is the trip that started it all. This is the very, very, very first Overton Travel Group trip um, that we did to South Africa back in 2012. Um, well, I didn't even think about it. This would be the 10 year anniversary of the South Africa trip. Um, this is kind of like my, 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 my standard, standard trip. I've taken more people to South Africa than any other um, um, place. And um, and this trip hasn't changed much since day one. You know, it's kind of one of the things, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And I've probably taken several hundred people to South Africa and it's always a, a winner. Um, the one thing about South Africa, what I love about South Africa is that we, um, we hit a lot. We go to Cape Town, we spend four nights in Cape Town, which is gorgeous, one of the most beautiful cities on earth, I put it right up Cape Town. Cape Town and Santorini, gorgeous, you know, as far as cities are, are concerned. Um, beautiful city, we stayed at a great hotel that's centrally located. Um, while we're in Cape Town, what do we do? Oh, we go to Robin Allen to see where Nelson Mandela was in prison. We go to Table Mountain, weather permitting. Um, we visit Table Mountain and the beautiful view of Cape Town. We go, we visit the peninsula along the coast, which is great. So after we spend four nights in Cape Town, we then um, go, we spend two nights on safari and we actually stay on, on a safari in the, in the safari lodges. So it's, it's great accommodation. One of my favorite places to be. So you're right there, um, not with the animal, but you're, 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 you're there on, in, in, in the bush for the that way. Um, great place on safari. And then we spend two nights in Johannesburg. We go to Soweto. We go to the township. We visit the people. Um, and I would say go soon um, to Soweto. The last time we were in Soweto, I think in December of 2019, Soweto is, is slowly being gentrified. Like, they're, they're, you know, where before, um, you know, white South Africans would not have been found, would not have gone to Soweto. Um, they're now buying up land in Soweto. So I see Soweto going the way of Harlem, going the way of Brooklyn. Um, they're, they're planning on building like a five-star hotel in Soweto now. So I've seen the changes just over the last 10 years of my visiting um, Soweto. So if you want to see it and how it really was, you know, Soweto was the center of the anti-apartheid movement in Johannesburg. Um, there's a lot of history with there. Nelson Mandela's house um, was in Soweto. Um, we also saw um, Archbishop Desmond Tutu's house was in Soweto uh, as well. So there's a lot of history and culture there. So, um, you know, God willing, we can get there. I know South Africa's gotten a bad rep lately, which I personally was upset about um, because, you know, South Africa, you know, discovered the Omicron variant. It wasn't that it was there and everywhere. So I don't know why they shut down just travel to South Africa or Southern Africa when the when the, it was everywhere. So anyhow, um, South Africa is a great place. Um, many um, countries, I, mean, I know the U.S. has um, um, open travel to South Africa now and other countries around the world are opening their borders back up to South Africa. But it's, an, it's, it's beautiful. It's one of my all-time favorite trips. It's a classic.
it doesn't disappoint um, ever. Okay. You know, let me just, I know we have some questions. I'm going to just take a break here because we're about halfway through and I am going to just stop and, and answer some of the questions that we, that we received so far. Um, get online. Someone asked about, um, so, so the person who asked about the Dubai and the particular COVID requirement, I'm going to talk about the actual COVID requirement um, in a separate meeting for, for Dubai for two reasons. Number one, I want to spend a lot of, and that's a very detailed question, so I want to make sure I give that the attention it needs. And also, COVID requirements change. So I don't want to give you information today and then come, you know, it changes in a week or so. So I'd rather give you the information um, um, closer to the time of it. But just in general, right now, the COVID test was going to buy, to buy needs to be a PCR test that's taken three days before we depart. And I'll give you all the details about that um, in a travel guide and during another webinar specifically for Dubai. Um, someone asked me if Las Cobos on my list. I wanted to go, I had a trip planned for Las Cobos in, in um, November, but Las Cobos, Cabos is definitely on my list. It's an amazing place to go. Um, it's so beautiful. Um, somebody has said something about the, the civil rights tour. Yes, it was very emotional. And oh, they said we're every penny spent. Thanks, Juanita, for saying about the civil rights tour. All right. So let me see. I think I answered all of the things in the question box so far. Okay, good. Let me see what else. Um, bear with me as I go and see if there are any questions. Um, and the chat. Oh, okay. I see Lisa put some comments in there about the civil rights tour. Okay. So no real questions, and I'm going to keep going on then. So now that the summer is almost over, after South Africa, at the end of the summer, where do we go? Back to another U.S.-based trip. Um, we are going to go to Cape Cod, Cape Cod and Martha's Vineyard. You know, and this was a trip I just said, you know what I mean? Just throw this out there. And it got a lot of response. So I'm, I'm excited about it. Um, this is a five-day, four-night trip. Um, we're going to go up to Cape Cod. We're going to be based in uh, Cape Cod. I think in the, I forgot what area of, of the island we're on. Um, anyhow, so we're going to be based four nights in Cape Cod. And then while we're there, we're going to take day trips. So we'll take one day trip over to Martha's Vineyard. And while we're in Martha's Vineyard, of course, we'll um, do an African-American tour on Martha's Vineyard and um, go to Inkwell and things of that nature. So we will um, do a Black History Tour on Martha's Vineyard. We'll take a day trip over. We'll take the, and either ferry ride. We'll take the ferry over to Nantucket as well. And do Nantucket doesn't have the African American history, just has beautiful history, beautiful streets, and things like that. We'll spend the day um, in, in Nantucket. Um, we'll also spend a day um, on the water doing well watching, which is great. This is good, good well watching season. Um, we'll also, while we're in Cape Cod, we'll go up to Kennebuck Point, or Kennebuck Point, if I think that that's correct. No, 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 not, not Kennebuck Point, um, where the Kennedy compound. I was in Maine. A couple weeks ago, that's kind of a point right there. But we'll go to the Kennedy compound and do some. There's a John F. John F. Kennedy memorial, so we'll view that while we're in Cape Cod. We'll also go up to um, Providence Town, Providence Town, which is called Lands End, is at the very tip of the Cape as well. So this is a great, relaxing trip. You know, it's about a five hour drive from New York. This is a bus trip. Um, the bus will be leaving from um, Westchester and from New York City area. Um, and then we'll be driving up to the Cape and spending four nights there and coming back. So we leave on a Monday, September 12th, and come back on Friday, September 16th. So it's an easy breezy trip where we do um, some sightseeing and then you have the evenings on your own to go out and um, eat some good um, New England clam chowder and some other good food up in the area. So um, once again, this is a response to folks asking for more U.S.-based trips. And um, this is an easy, easy bus trip out of New York. Morocco. This is the other hot trip for 2022. Morocco um, has a lot of people signed up for as well. Dubai, Morocco were very, very hot. So I think I'm almost, I have maybe like 25 or so booked for Morocco. 
um, so far. So there's a couple more rooms left on it. It's an amazing trip. This is also one of those typical on the go trip. Um, this trip is about 10, 11 days and we visit probably five or six cities during that time, maybe six cities. So this is up and Adam, up and Adam on the go. We cover a lot of ground um, in this trip. Um, Morocco is exotic, it's amazing, it's everything you think it's gonna be. Um, it has that great, uh, it's, it's Northern Africa, so it has the more of the, the Arab history, the Arab culture, than the Southern, uh, the African, Sub-Saharan Africa. Um, I love the Moroccan food, um, but that Moroccan green tea we drink is great. Um, the picture here is the ride through the desert. The camel ride is, is amazing. I mean, it's not a photo op. Um, in Dubai, we ride camel, but Dubai is more like a photo op where you're going to ride around, you know, in a circle and it's more just, it's fun. The, the camel ride in, in Morocco, it really is the camel is your mode of transportation um, through, through the desert. Um, we are going to be spending one night in a, a luxury safari camp. Um, um, well, luxury desert camp during this Morocco trip. So we'll be taking the camel to the camp. Um, don't worry for those of you who don't want to ride a camel. We do have um, some SUVs for you. So um, don't let the camel ride de deter you. So we will have an SUV available to take those of you who don't want to ride um, the camel to the safari camp. But um, what I like about this trip, we um, I'm working with the local vendors. So we're going to stay in some very traditional accommodations, some Riyadh. Um, which is very unique to, to Morocco. Um, we will visit Fez and go to the Medinas, um, very dizzy and like the shopping in Fez is, is unreal. We go to Fez, we'll go to Marrakesh. Oh gosh, we will go to, I can't even remember, Casablanca, of course. And we're just in and out of Casablanca. Um, not too much to see there, but we visit all parts of Morocco and it's going to be an amazing trip. We're going to eat good food, have great entertaining with the belly dances and the and the and the tangine, the food and the tangine and staying at Riyadh. So this is a great trip. So I would say sign up soon because this is one of the trips that is at um has the potential of selling out soon because so many has so many people interested in it. Vietnam. Oh my God, we went to Vietnam in 2018. Um those of you who don't know I used to work in corporate America full time before I before I start doing open travel full time. This is a trip that made me quit my job. I did not have enough vacation time left <laughs> to go on a Vietnam trip, and I said, "Well, God, this must be a sign." So I I, I gave my notice, um, and I quit my job on September thirtieth, and I went to Vietnam on um uh, on October first of twenty eighteen. I think those are the dates. But this was the trip that kind of made me say, "You know what? It's time to go." Vietnam is amazing. I, it is, um, it is, it's one of the probably most underrated destinations that I've been to. I was blown away by Vietnam. Um, because Americans, we think of Vietnam as a war. Most of the time people say Vietnam, we're thinking of the Vietnam War. Vietnam is a country. It's not, it's not just the, the war that took place. It's a beautiful country. It's a tropical country. Some of the nicest people you will ever meet in Vietnam. The food in Vietnam was amazing. The Vietnamese coffee in the morning was great. I was so surprised. The, the bread and the cheeses are great because Vietnam was colonized by the French at one point. And so they have a lot of the French cooking techniques. And the croissants in Vietnam were just were on par with, with croissants you were getting in Paris. And the cheeses and things like that. And then, of course, just the regular um, Asian cooking that that's influenced by the Chinese and the Japanese and things like that. That was amazing as well. So the food was great in Vietnam. The site is so beautiful. Uh, if you take the boat to Ha Long Bay and you see the limestone rocks coming up out of the bay, it's just like, it's, 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 it's so serene. You just want to sit there on the boat, be quiet and meditate. It, 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 it's just, the serenity is amazing. Um, we go to Halong. We visit, I think, five or six cities. This is another on-the-go trip. I think it's five cities we visit. Um, we start from the south of Vietnam and we work our way up to the north. So we we fly into um, Saigon or Ho Chi Minh City and we fly out of um, oh my god, I can't remember where we fly out of. We we fly out of. It'll come to me. It'll come to me later. So 
but um, not Hoi An. We, 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 we go from the south to, to Hanoi, excuse me. We fly into Saigon and we fly out of Hanoi and we visit Hoi An, which is a great, beautiful, beautiful uh, quaint city. Um, we visit Hue, which is a wall city um, in Vietnam and so many other, other places. It's, it's a great, great, great trip. If you want something unique and exotic, Vietnam is really, really unique. I think you'd be blown away um, by this trip. I have never seen so many people on mopeds in my life than I did in Hanoi. I mean, they had to be like a million people during rush hours on mopeds, and they carry everything on those mopeds. We saw refrigerators on those mopeds. We saw goats on those mopeds. We saw a family of five people on those mopeds. It, it just, it really is a different, it's totally a cultural experience. Vietnam, also the great value. Um, the trip is a really good value. It's also about, about 12, 13 days on the trip. And we cover a lot, a lot, a lot. And the shopping is great in Vietnam. People got custom-made suits, custom-made dresses, custom-made shoes. They make it in a day for you. Um, so it's a great trip. So I highly recommend Vietnam. Egypt. Um, I think Egypt is a staple. Uh, I don't even need to say much about Egypt. Um, Egypt has been a, been a, one of the, the, I guess, top destinations in the world for, for a while. Um, the pyramids are a sight to behold. Actually, my favorite part of Egypt is, is not um, the pyramid. My favorite part of Egypt was um, going to see the Valley of the Kings. Um, that, to me, was breathtaking. Could you see pictures of the pyramids all the time, which was great, um, but I didn't know... Um, about the Valley of the Kings, which kind of just took my breath away um, in Egypt. So what I like about this trip, um, it's a week long trip. So for those of you who still, you know, um, a short time at work, we it's from Saturday to Saturday. Um, we spend four, so you can take one week off from work, but we pack a lot into this one week. Um, we spend four days on the Nile cruise, which is an amazing trip. So I kind of upgraded this trip a little bit. I've done it twice in the past. This is the third time I'm doing a trip to Egypt. Um, we go on a spend four nights on the Nile cruise. So you can tell me I wasn't Cleopatra on the cruise. But anyway, we spend four nights on, on the cruise and each day you stop at a different location um, to visit. So we start this trip, we start in Luxor and we end in Aswan, um, which is great. And the good thing about the cruise, the cruise, uh, all your food is included, breakfast, lunch, and dinner is included on the cruise and the food is really good. And you stop at these amazing sites. And our tour guide is, a, is an Egyptologist, which just, he just, he or she would just drop some knowledge about Egyptian um, history on you. It's amazing um, what these people were doing and thousands of years ago. And when you go down into the tombs of some of these pyramids, the colors are still vibrant and bright. It's just like, this was built, this was done 2000 years ago. It's hard to believe that. So um, Egypt is amazing with all the things you see with the pyramid, with the Lux going to Luxor, going to Aswan. Um, you, we get to, I think in this trip I included the Nubian village, which we didn't do in previous year, um, going to the Nubian village, because that's where you get to see the Egyptians that have more the African, the dark African as well um, features. Uh, the food in Egypt is good. The shopping in Egypt is great. Um, and then after four days on the Nile, we spend two days in Cairo. Um, so one of my favorite hotels is in Cairo as well. Um, two days in Cairo, that's where we visit the pyramid, do the camel ride, we visit, visit the bazaar um, where people go shopping in Cairo. So it's a, it's a great trip. Oh, and of course, um, the Egyptian Museum is in Cairo, which is amazing where you'll see the mummies of King Tut. You'll see the mummies of different kings. You'll see all the different artifacts. Um, and the Egyptian Museum, so it, it's great. They drive crazy in Egypt, y'all. I mean, you haven't seen traffic, you've seen traffic in Cairo. Um, uh, the tour guide say the, the traffic signs, the lights and stuff, they're just a suggestion. <laughs> uh, they are just a suggestion. Traffic is crazy in Cairo, okay? So that's in October. The weather's great in October in Egypt as well. So after Egypt, then Iceland. I wanna do something different, y'all. So um, I have never done like a cold weather trip and um, we're going to Iceland. Um, we're going in November. And the reason for November is because um, that's a good time to see the Northern Light. I think from September to March is um, Northern Light season. So folks wanted to see the Northern Lights and uh, 
We're going to go to Iceland to see it. This is, I'm excited about this trip. It's something different than what I've done before. Um, Iceland is a quick, it's, it's not a long flight, a direct flight and flying on Iceland there from JFK to Reykjavik. And it's um, six days, five nights. So it's kind of, you know, one of those, another week long trip for those of you who are short on time. Um, and it's going to be great because we're going to hunt for the Northern Lights, which is kind of the highlight, but the Northern Lights is a natural phenomenon, so we can't guarantee it, but we're going to do our best to try to find the Northern Light. So we're going to spend um, two nights in the city in Reykjavik, and then we'll spend three nights out in the countryside, because you can see the country, the best time to see Northern Lights is when it's dark out in the country. The same thing like here, like you can see the stars better when you go to the country than you can in, in New York City. In New York City, you look up, you can't see stars. But when you go down to the country, go down to North Carolina, out in the woods or whatever, you can see stars. So the same concept with the Northern Light is easier to see once you leave the city. So that's what we spend. We spend the first night in Reykjavik, the last night in Reykjavik, and then the, the three nights in between, we spend out in the countryside. Um, and we can hunt for the Northern Lights there. Also, while we're out there, we'll see they're known for beautiful hot springs in Iceland. So the hot springs are, are, are gorgeous. The scenery is gorgeous. The waterfalls. So it's just a beautiful place to be. Um, they have um, one place where actually bake bread underground because the heat from the hot springs um, underwater, underground can bake bread. So we'll, we'll have that experience as well. And then, of course, we can't go to Iceland without going to the Blue Lagoon. And um, that's a natural hot spring as well. So we'll spend an afternoon at the Blue Lagoon in Iceland. So I'm excited about the trip. It's November, so go ahead and sign up. We have um, quite a few people have signed up already. So this was one of the hot trips as well when I when I announced that people immediately signed up for Iceland. All right, good. I'm coming towards the end. Um, Thailand. Um, Thailand is near and dear to me. I think I've been to Thailand three times and love it. Um, uh, Thailand is beautiful. The people are wonderful in Thailand. It's another one of those kind of exotic places, very similar. Um, I say Thailand and Vietnam. People ask, like, what do you like best? They're, they're both wonderful places for different reasons. Um, Thailand, we, we start in Bangkok. We spend three nights in Bangkok. You go see the Grand Palace. You go see the temples in, in Bangkok as well. We go to the floating market while we're in Bangkok. Um, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful place. What I like about Thailand is also the accommodations. Are, well, all my accommodations are great, I would have to say, but Thailand is, is, is really good as well. Um, then at the three nights in Thailand and Bangkok, we fly up to Chiang Mai. We spend three nights in the north. Um, Chiang Mai used to be the capital of Thailand before Bangkok was, so it has a lot of history up there. Great shopping in Thailand also, um, you can get custom made suits in Bangkok and in Chiang Mai, my group that we went in 2018, 2019. Um, a lot of the men got their suits made, a lot of ladies got their dresses made, you get custom made outfits there in Chiang Mai. Of course, we're gonna eat with a, a local family while we're in Chiang Mai, you know, do that cultural experience, the cultural immersion. And then after we rip and run all through Bangkok and Chiang Mai, the last four days we're gonna Phuket, and we'll be staying at a hotel on the beach and you can relax. And I put in a lot of optional tools there. So for those of you, some of my people just want to relax. Other people do not want to relax. So for those who don't want to relax, you can take an optional tour of little um, PP Island, which is gorgeous. Um, you can take an optional tour and go feed the elephant on the elephant sanctuary, which is amazing to see how they're rescuing the elephants. Um, and I think I have another, um, we have a cooking class tour and another boat tour in Thailand. So um, it's great. In November, the weather is amazing. Um, the dry season, the rainy season ends in October. So November is the start of the dry season. So it's a great time to go. And those are, that is all the trips for next year. So we have a great roster planned for 2022. Um, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen here, come back full screen, and I'm going to go and see if there are any questions that I need to answer before we end this, because we're coming up on an hour. Um, let me see. How many people have signed up for Egypt? Egypt, not too many people have signed up for Egypt yet. I got a lot of questions. This is a question from Sheila. One, two, three, maybe like five or so have signed up for it. Um, 
So, so yeah, there is space. So please do sign up. Uh, guys, don't keep me, you know, I've, I've been on pins and needles sometimes wondering like, is this trip going to go? Is anybody going to sign up for it? People are, yeah, Lori, I'm interested. If you're interested, sign up. One of the things I did, um, I think in 2021 was um, I reduced all the deposits on the trip. They used to be $500 deposit. Um, but um, I changed them to 300 to make it a little bit easier. Um um, for use of deposits on all of the trips are just $300. And that'll save your space. That'll let me know people are interested in the trip. Because if, if it comes to a point where no one's signing up for, I will I will pull a trip. I will have to cancel it if nobody's signing up for it or not enough is signing up for it. And then as soon as I cancel it and somebody comes back and say, oh, I wanted to go, I wanted to go. And I'm like, well, I didn't know. Um, so... Um, yeah, if you're interested, please just, just sign up. At least put your deposit down and um, let me know um, that you're interested um, in a trip. Um, Vietnam is one that I need people to sign up for. If you're going to really go, let me know um, because my, my supplier is asking me, Lori, how many plates, how many people do you have? Because when I put a trip out there, I have already reserved. Most of the time, the flights are reserved. They haven't been reserved. They have reserved Soon afterward, but all the hotels are booked, all the tour guides are booked. I have space reserved when um when um I put a trip out there, and um, so sometimes I have to make payments in between. Um, after I reserve it, you know, maybe three or four months, I have to pay on it. On my suppliers are asking how many people do you have booked for it. If I don't have enough, you know, luckily that doesn't happen too often, but it does happen. I mean, I have enough people, and I have to pull a trip. Um. So that's Egypt. And then someone else asked a question. Yes, yeah, you can sign up as a single. And then um, if you find a roommate, you can definitely change it to, to a double. As long as you do that before final payment is made, you can um, change from a single to a double. And vice versa, if you have a double and then you know your roommate doesn't want to come, you can change from double to single um, as long as you do it before the final payment is made. And then somebody was asking, um, COVID safety is everyone required to be vaccinated and boosted. It depends on the country. So each country has their own required. Oh, let me ask you, um, let me answer that question. So I am, yes. So to, to um, for some of the trips that I put out there, you'll see that I have required that people be, to be vaccinated and probably now boosted for the trip. And it, and it says, that it says it on, on the, um, on, on the description. So I am requiring people to be to be vaccinated. Um, I wasn't in the beginning, but you might as well be because most countries now are requiring that you be be vaccinated and some of them are requiring boosters as well. So the requirements are changing daily. I would say definitely, um, I would not recommend anybody to get on the plane to go anywhere, even in the US um, without um, being, being vaccinated. And if you're eligible for being boosted, um, they get boosted um, as, as well. And let me see, I think, oops. Okay, so here's another question we have. Yes, the, so let me tell you about how the deposits are. Deposits are non-refundable. How, so you have a $300 deposit. Now, if you decide, hey, I don't wanna go on a trip, if, but the, if the trip is still going, and you just des you decide I don't want to go. It's not refundable, or you can move it to a different trip. If you, I had somebody said, you know what, Lori, I don't want to go to you know um, Ghana, but can I? Can you put my money on um, Morocco or something like that? You can decide to to move it. Um, in that case, I will I will allow you to move to move to move your money. Um, but if over to travel, if I cancel a trip, if I say, you know what, the trip is not going, you get all your money back. So anytime that I cancel a trip, if the trip just does not go, you will get your money back. But if you cancel a trip, your deposit is not, not refundable. So just wanted to make that clear. Thanks for asking that question. And then there's another question. Um, yeah, the Ghana trip is, yeah, the Ghana trip is going this year. We're going to Ghana this year from um, July 6th through the 17th. And so we have a nice little group signed up um, um, for, um, for Ghana. So we are going this year, God willing, and the creeks don't rise. Um, we are planning to go to Ghana. So if your friend is interested, please, please, please send them to the Open Travel website to, to sign up. 
Okay, let me see. So yeah, so I answered the, the question about the deposits. Any other question coming through? I think I answered all the questions in the question box and I'm just gonna check the chat, see if there are any other questions there in the chat. Bear with me as I navigate. Okay, great. So I'm glad some of you guys are talking about the different trip, the civil rights trip, the Egypt trip and things of that nature. So anyhow, so thank you guys for joining today. I just wanted to give you um, a recap of what we're doing for 2022. Um, please, please, you know, I'm always here if you have questions. Um, you can call me, text me, email me, um, but please sign up for trips. You know, for, the, for those of you who are willing, um, sign up. Let me know you're interested so I don't be on pins and needles wondering, oh, is, is anyone going to go? Um, let me know if you have questions or you're on the fence. I'm always here um, for you. I will um, answer your trips as, answer your questions as open and honestly as I can, give you the information that I have as of today, particularly with COVID information and COVID requirements. We all know that this is a dynamic situation, it's fluid, so things change. So I always give people the caveat, this is the situation as it is of January 12th, 2022, because we know that January 15th, it can be different. So we make the best decision with the information that we have at hand. Um, so for those of you who are willing and ready to go, like I said, I'm the girl, come travel with us, but we're planning to still mask up. I always say mask up, stay masked up, stay prayed up. And that's all we can do. So on that note, be well, be safe, be blessed, everyone. And, um, you know, just continue living, God willing. All right. Thank you for joining and uh, we'll be in touch the next time. Take care.